Welcome to the Content Amplified Podcast, brought to you by Masset. Our goal is to help you get more from your marketing content. Each episode is a 10 to 15 minute interview with industry experts that share amazing insights to help you squeeze as much juice from your content as you possibly can. Here's today's interview. Welcome back to another episode of Content Amplified. Today, I'm joined by Suleika. Suleika, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Well, before we dive in, Suleika, let's get to know you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into marketing, what you love about content marketing in general, and then we'll dive into the subject for the day. I have been in this the particular industry that I'm in for over 19 years, and so I came from a background of having very... Uh, technical writing. And so there was an opportunity to move over to the marketing team. And I have enjoyed every single moment of it. It lets me be creative on a subject that is a very niche industry, which is transportation, imports, exports, which I didn't really know about um, until I got into this company. And so it's been a great ride. And so far, I love all aspects of marketing, but in particular, the the content piece. Well, I'm super excited for the subject today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Really, we're talking about content strategy and data and how it plays a role to really analyze your data and look at your content strategy and improve it as you go on. So first and foremost, how does data play a role in content? I know often it's really difficult for us to find it to use it, to think about it, you know, content, sometimes that little mystery black box that you're not sure about. Suleika, how do you look at like the data and the analytics and how does that inform your content marketing strategy? Yeah, I think, first of all, I think it's very important to make the time to look at the data. And like you said, there's just so much data that you can look at, whether it's website analytics, social media, email marketing campaigns. And so um, one of the things that I like to look at, well, first, it's very important to set those KPIs, right? Where you have to have a starting base as to what those are and really what your goals are, because looking at the analytics, it really depends on what your goals and it'll let you change your content to either say, hey, this is working great for us or we need to tweak it. What is really going on? So, for example, um, at one point in time, uh, you know, we were told, hey, social media, you know, it was a new thing for us that we really had a, a high focus on. And we were told, hey, you should be posting three times a day on LinkedIn. And I was like, "Um, absolutely not, right? (laughs) But I needed to show the numbers to say, hey, just because we're posting two to three times a day isn't really giving us the engagement that we want, the impressions that we want. And so using that data, using the numbers, I was able to really show management like, hey, maybe let's tone it down a little bit, right? Maybe once a day, maybe a couple times a week. And as that has progressed, now I've been able to show, hey, we're getting the engagement that we want, right? We've improved our engagement 50%, et cetera. So um, they really tell a story. I know it sounds a little cheesy, but numbers do tell a story. And so it's just making the time to see what they're telling you and to really dig into how you're going to change your content. I love that. And it's so important that you have the strategy that you're talking about, because if you don't have the strategy, none of the numbers really make much sense. Then it's just, I want more, but it's like, well, what are we trying to accomplish? And the numbers will tell us if we're hitting that goal or not. So when you're looking at a content strategy, what are some components that go into creating a content strategy as opposed to, you know, unfortunately the typical Let's do blog posts. Let's do social media posts. Let's engage yeah. with people, yada, yada, yada. Like what, what's different between that and an actual strategy and how do you build one? Right. The content strategy really starts with who is your audience, right? Who are you targeting? Because different messages just across the board aren't really going to um, help you. And so it's taking a look at your audience and what do you want to achieve? Is it just getting, you know, uh, website views? Is it getting lead generations? Um, So depending on what your goals are, then 
tweaking who your audience is, what your goals are, then you could see what type of content does, does your persona really identify with social media. So then you're going to be targeting them with social media posts or would they prefer a short video and that it's emailed to them. So then you, you know, come up with email strategy campaign um, featuring small videos. Maybe they like something longer or a white paper. So really getting to know who your audience is, is key to finding out what type of content you should be using. I love it. And I like how your strategy starts and ends with the end user, right? So it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, I pick out the perfect audience, right? Who who am I engaging with? All that kind of stuff. And that informs literally everything else down from there, from what content do they enjoy? Where do they spend time? How do I get them from where they're at to where I want them to be? And the content fills the gaps. Is that kind of how you approach it? A hundred percent. Yes. You explained it very well because if it's, you know, if it's just what you want to do, it it doesn't necessarily match, right? What your audience wants. And so we really have to, you know, think like our audience and, and the numbers, I mean, everybody's a little bit different, but the numbers will tell you. And so that's why they kind of go hand in hand where, you know, you take a look at the numbers and then if you have to tweak, not a problem. You can always tweak your content and, you know, repurpose it, uh, make it a little better. And it, it just really helps your audience stay engaged. And um, I really think that it, it's also important because your information isn't stale, right? Yeah. If you're not changing, for example, your your web page or you're always posting the same thing, people are going to stop paying attention to you. And so I think if you're taking a look at the data, that really helps you continue to improve um, your your content. And it's only going to be better for you and, and for your clients or, you know, your particular audience that you're looking to to talk to. I love it. So you've got the strategy, the numbers are really driving home to prove, okay, are we executing on that strategy? I want to double click into something you said a little bit earlier on. You talked about taking the time to do the analysis. I think this is a point that uh, is absolute gold because I've seen this in my career. I think it's really important. How do you justify the time how do you get everyone else on board? Like, how do you really create an atmosphere where taking the time to analyze the data and drive decisions is really acceptable, potentially at the cost of even creating just a little bit more content? You know, how do you do that? How do you pull that off? Um, I think having great communication with your team and getting them on board, right? Having the buy in from them to show them, like, hey, We can be creating all this content that we want, but if I can't take the time to see what those numbers, what those analytics tell us, we could be wasting our time. So it might take a little bit more time on the front end, but it's going to benefit not only our team, but the company as a whole. And so once, you know, the team and management gets on board with that, then I can easily say like, hey guys, you know what? I'm going to be out of pocket because I have to do this, you know, taking a look at the numbers, looking at the analytics. And so it, it hasn't been too hard once you're able to show what the data shows, right? So it all comes in into play. And so it is hard because, you know, as you know, in marketing, we always get last minute requests, urgent requests, things come in that just have to be handled. But setting that time apart is super important to make sure that your content stays, you know, on brand and um, that you're always improving the content. That's super cool. When you're looking at the data, like we talked about as well, there's a ton to track, you know, Mm -hmm. social media platforms, analytics on Google or website analytics, things of that nature. How do you know what's a vanity metric that may not be that impactful towards your content versus the metrics that really do make the biggest difference? How do you separate those two? Oh, that's such a good question. It all goes back to what is the goal of this content, right? If the goal is, hey, we just want people to, you know, visit the website. How does that convert? After I post this 
you know, social media posts? Am I seeing an uptick on, you know, uh, our landing page or our website page? And if it's not, then, okay, maybe we have to tweak it. But it really depends on on what the goals are for, for the content. And I think you need to prioritize, you know, maybe one, three or five max. It really depends on how big your team is and what, what your goals are. But what are those metrics that you really want to track and that you are able to see a, a difference in? I love it. Something you also mentioned before that I'd love to double click on and, and kind of get really tactical with it. Mm-hmm. You talked about the data analysis. I've heard a really cool analogy. You can have like reports that are data throw up, which is kind of a a rude example to use. So I apologize to anyone listening, but uh, hopefully it's after your lunch or something like that. But you have that compared to data analysis, right? Where mm-hmm. there's a lot of words and context and it provides a lot of insights how do you create the data analysis versus just here's the data dump? And how do you really share that? Because you talked about other people really come to expect this. How are you actually communicating the insights to people on the marketing team and potentially the rest of the organization? You know, taking some of the bigger picture kind of analysis that the numbers, you know, um, I'm a big fan of using charts, right? Sometimes it's just easier instead of throwing a bunch of numbers out, hey, here's like Mm -hmm. a pie chart or whatever to show this is the growth or this is, you know, the non-growth sometimes, right? Unfortunately, that happens. (laughs) And so um, putting it into taking all the numbers and just really kind of making a story of it, right? And, And just really explaining and high level bullet points, because if you get too much into the weeds, people tend to tune you out and they're like, "Uh, it's too much numbers. I really don't care. Like what is the bottom line? (laughs) And so it's really trying to, that's why it takes so long is to crunch all those numbers and not just dump it out, but really, you know, what is the story here? Hey, we started here. This is where we grew or we remained stagnant, whatever the case may be. Um, but there's something to tell there and just make it very um, piecemeal for people to to digest and, and understand and not just having too many of those. Because like you said, some of them are, are more vanity metrics and they don't really help us, um, you know, with the content, but knowing what really to pick and just really make it a, a higher level um, pitch. Love it. So are you consolidating the data into like a singular document that you're keeping track of? Or do you pull the data separately from the different platforms? Like obviously, again, with a lot of sources, how are you merging and kind of keeping track of the progress over time to really be able to create this analysis of here's our baseline, here's how we improved, here's what we were looking to do, here's what happened last time. How do you kind of centralize that and and work off of it? Yeah, I'm not a big Excel person, but that's literally what I I use. You know, I have a tab for whether it's our social media or website metrics. And so a a lot of the the platforms that we use, you know, have great reports. And so I have to dig all the information from the reports that, that they send us. And it's like, okay, let me transfer some of this over. And then from Excel, then I'll probably transfer it to like a PowerPoint so I can make those charts and, you know, graphs and all that fun stuff. And so it's a lot of documentation really that, you know, that we have to keep. Um, but I try to, you know, stay as organized as possible. And like I said, um, Excel is is great for that. And, you know, because you can have a million and one tabs. And so I'm able to pull up, you know, because I do get that question quite a bit um, sometimes from, from my management team where it's like, hey, so, you know, this last email campaign, like what happened? And it's like, hey, I could pull it up easily um, or I could run a report. But, you know, the important stuff I, I always track in, in Excel. I love how you're centralizing all the data in one place, because I think that's the quickest and the best way to become really familiar with the data to understand the story it's telling, understand what you're looking for long term. I think like the first level of understanding the data is just looking at it. A lot of people don't. And then I think you're at that next level of let's take it, put it in a different format, consume it in a different way. And obviously like what you're doing is also what a lot of BI tools and people will manipulate the data to show it in BI tools and things like that. And 
honestly, if you want to get good with data, I think one of the first things to figure out is how do I learn Excel at least enough and what data can I put into it and how do I build my charts? And, and I think that that's a really cool way of getting familiar with the data. So I love, I love that. I think that's super cool that you have it all tracked in one place to say, I have a source of truth. Here's the information. I know what this, you know, used to be and, and all that kind of stuff. And I can compare it. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Cause if not, it, it's just too much data. Right. And it's just all over the place and it's like, oh yeah, where did I leave that report? And so, yeah, yeah. it's definitely important to just have wh- and whatever that may be for, for other people. I just, you know, use Excel cause it's just, you know, e- easy, easy enough for me. Cause I'm not that technical. Um, well, it can be a very technical product, but uh, yeah. it's definitely like one of the best ways. And, and as time goes on, it's a Google search away from, oh, how do I create this in Excel? Exactly. But if you got it in Excel, you can do cool stuff. So yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, as promised, these episodes go by quickly. Um, we love providing actionable insights really quickly and let people get back to their day. But Suleika, if someone wants to connect with you, and really continue the conversation online, where can they go to find you? You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, My profile name is Suleika Medina. And yeah, I'm happy to connect with anybody that wants to, you know, continue this conversation. Um, I'm a little nerdy about, you know, talking about content. So thank you so much for the opportunity to, to be on your podcast. Absolutely. I had a great conversation. We'll link to your profile and everything in the show notes so it's easy to find you. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Thank you for listening to the Content Amplified podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review. And for additional ways to get more out of your content, visit our website at getmasset.com. That's getmasset.com. And tune in next time to the Content Amplified podcast.